，四五分钟才能到。
，联合国秘书长古特雷斯。国际货币基金组织总裁拉加德，世界银行行长金庸。柬埔寨首相洪森，干嘛呢？埃塞俄比亚总理海尔·马里亚姆。斐济总理姆拜尼·拉马拉，希腊总理齐普拉斯。匈牙利总理欧尔班。瑞士联邦主席洛伊特·哈德，意大利总理珍蒂洛尼。塞尔维亚总理武契奇。缅甸国务资政昂山素季，巴基斯坦总理谢里夫。马来西亚总理纳吉布。
波兰总理谢德沃，西班牙首相拉霍伊。斯里兰卡总理维克拉马辛哈，蒙古国总理额尔登巴特。阿根廷总统马克里，智利总统巴切莱特。白俄罗斯总统卢卡申科，捷克总统泽曼。肯尼亚总统肯亚塔。印度尼西亚总统佐科。老挝国家主席本扬。菲律宾总统杜特尔特，哈萨克斯坦总统纳扎尔巴耶夫。
吉尔斯吉斯斯坦总统阿塔姆巴耶夫。越南国家主席陈大光乌兹别克斯坦总统米尔季约耶夫。
尊敬的各国各位国家元首、政府首脑、Heads of International Organizations、国际组织负责人，现在我宣布 ，I now declare open the leaders' roundtable of the Belt and Road Forum. For international cooperation. I welcome all of you to Yanqi Lake for the Leaders' Roundtable. It gives us a good opportunity to discuss how to promote international cooperation. For common development, I put forward the initiative of building the Silk Road Economic Belt and the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road in 2013. The initiative aims to promote infrastructure development and greater connectivity, synergize the development policies and strategies of individual countries. Deepen practical cooperation, encourage coordinated and interconnected development, and bring about common prosperity. I have come up with this Belt and Road Initiative based on my observation of and reflection on the situation of the world. We live in an age of great progress, great transformation, and profound changes. A new round of scientific Technological and industrial revolution is in the making. New growth drivers are gaining momentum. National interests are increasingly entwined. Peace, development, and women cooperation have become the trend of our times. On the other hand, the deep-seated problems in global development are yet to be addressed effectively. Global economic growth. Is not on a solid ground. International trade and investment are sluggish. Economic globalization is encountering some headwinds. Development has become more uneven. Not to mention the other challenges that overshadow the world economy, like wars, conflicts, terrorism, and a massive flow of refugees and migrants. Confronted by these challenges, many countries are pondering the way forward and have put forward many good development strategies and cooperation initiatives. However, in a world of growing interdependence and challenges, no country can tackle the challenges. Also, the world's problems on its own. Individual countries need to coordinate national policies and make good use of economic factors and development resources on a greater global scale. Only in this way can we build synergy and promote peace, stability, and common development in the world. The Belt and the Road Initiative is rooted in history, but oriented toward the future. Reflecting our forefathers' aspiration for a better life, the ancient Silk Road connected nations in Asia and Europe, catalyzed cultural exchanges and mutual learning between the East and West, and made an important contribution to progress in human civilization. We have every reason to draw wisdom and strength from the ancient Silk Road. Advanced cooperation in the Silk Road spirit of peace and cooperation, openness and inclusiveness, mutual learning and mutual benefit, and work together to build an even brighter future. The Belt and Road Initiative originates from China. But belongs to the world. It involves countries in different regions, at different development stages, and with different cultures. It is a platform of open and inclusive cooperation, and a public good we jointly provide to the world. While the Belt and Road Initiative focuses on the Asian and European continent. 
It is open to all like-minded friends. It does not exclude or target any party. In pursuing international cooperation at the Belt and the Road Initiative, the parties follow the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits, and join hands to meet global economic challenges, aiming to draw on each other's strength and deliver win-win results. The parties will explore new opportunities, seek new drivers. And expand new space for development, moving closer toward a community of shared future for mankind. This is why I had in, what I had in mind when I first put forward the Belt and the Road Initiative. It is also the ultimate goal of this initiative. I am pleased to note that the international community has given positive responses and extensive support to the Belt and the Road Initiative. More than 100 countries and international organizations have participated in it. A large number of cooperation projects have been launched, and some are already in operation. An interconnected infrastructure network is taking shape. Industrial cooperation is gaining momentum. Policy coordination is improving. People are beginning to reap the benefits of the Belt and Road cooperation and feel even closer to each other. All this provides a good basis for the Belt and Road Forum for international cooperation. China has proposed. And is hosting the forum precisely for the purpose of extensive consultation on cooperation, joint contribution to the cooperation platform, and shared benefits of cooperation by all the parties involved to make sure that our people are better off as a result of the Belt and Road Initiative. At a high-level dialogue yesterday, leaders of various countries. And international organizations and the representatives of the business and academic communities offered many useful ideas and proposals, and many cooperation agreements were signed. I hope today's roundtable will help us build more consensus, chart the course, and develop a blueprint for the Belt and Road cooperation. I hope our discussions here will make good progress in the following areas. First, setting the direction of win-win cooperation. The swan geese can fly long and safe through winds and storm because they move in flocks and help each other. As a team, it brings home the message that the best way to meet challenges and achieve better development is through cooperation. In our cooperation, we need to work in a spirit of partnership and follow the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits policy, infrastructure, trade, financial, and people-to-people connectivity should be our shared goal. We need to seek win-win results through greater openness and cooperation. Avoid fragmentation. Refrain from setting inhibitive thresholds for cooperation or pursuing exclusive arrangements, and reject protectionism. It requires a peaceful and a stable environment to pursue the Belt and Road Initiative. It is important for individual countries to step up cooperation, resolve their differences and disputes through dialogue and consultation, and work together to maintain regional security and stability. Second, strengthening policy coordination and synergizing our development policies and strategies. We need to improve policy coordination and reject beggar thy neighbor practices. This is an important lesson that can be drawn from the global financial crisis and is still very much relevant. To the development of the world economy today, national development strategies are drafted in the light of particular national circumstances and have their own distinctive features. At the same time, they generally pursue the same goal. There is a great deal of common ground and complementarity among the strategies. We could make good use of this to promote and reinforce development for all of us. 
Based on this common understanding, we need to set up a mechanism for policy coordination and mutual learning. We can build on it, work out plans for cooperation, and take concerted actions to coordinate our plans, pursue interconnected development, and share the benefits. We need to seek greater complementarity between the Belt and the Road cooperation and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the outcomes of the G20 Hangzhou Summit. The regional development initiatives of APEC, ASEAN, AU, EEU, EU, and CELAC, and the development plans of relevant countries. By doing so, we will make the whole greater than the sum of its parts. Third, deepening practical cooperation driven by concrete projects. As the saying goes, roads don't build themselves and good things don't happen by themselves. Concrete action is the key to turning a blueprint into reality. In terms of infrastructure connectivity, we need to push forward the construction of railways, roads and other major land transportation arteries speed up the development of seaports and improve oil and gas pipelines, electricity transmission and telecommunication networks. In terms of cooperation in the real economy, we need to vigorously develop economic corridors and work for the success of economic trade and industrial cooperation zones to boost investment, industrial clusters and job creation and take the path of innovation-driven development. In terms of trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, we need to improve free trade areas, harmonize rules and standards, and provide a better business and institutional environment so as to fully unlock the potential of greater connectivity. In terms of financial cooperation, we need to broaden the channels, develop new models, and reduce the cost of financing and remove the bottlenecks that impede project implementation. People-to-people -people exchange is an important part of the Belt and Road cooperation. We need to deepen cultural exchanges, make our cooperation more inclusive and solidly based and enable the people to become the main drivers and the beneficiaries in pursuing the Belt and the Road Initiative. Dear colleagues, Yanqi Lake is an inspiring place with a rich history, and you can see in the mountains the relics of China's Great War. It is a good place to start our journey of cooperation. Many people have compared the Belt and the Road to a pair of soaring wings. Here from Yanqi Lake, let us spread our wings, soar to the sky, and reach to out together for a future of peace, development, and win-win cooperation. Thank you. Dear colleagues, now we will begin the first session of the plenary and discuss policy synergy for closer partnership. Realizing economic development and improvement of people's livelihoods represents the common aspirations of people of all countries and also serve as a source of driving force for world economic growth.